Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today I'm so excited to have on a 35 year old from Thorold, Ontario, Canada, who I won the Southern Cup against. His hockey journey has taken him to Canada, the USA, Norway, Austria, and he is a goat in Cardiff, Wales. And he just put in a legendary shift at Josh Batch's testimonial and had instant chemistry with his right winger. Once we sent Lordo down to the second line and we <laughs> ran a muck on the ice and off the ice. He became a winner and a muck runner way back in 06, 07 with the Aurora Tigers, putting up a casual 31 playoff points on route to the championship. Then became a captain and a star with the University of Nebraska, Omaha. He then jumped into pro and dominated the coast for three seasons, putting up 160 points. And a point a game in the playoffs, folks. Confirmed gamer. He then headed to our Cardiff Devils and promptly became a champion with yours truly. And for five straight years, he was an EIHL first team all-star, a three-time forward of the year, a two-time player of the year, two challenge cups, two playoffs, two league titles, and has 88 reserved in the rafters. Welcome to my grandma's cottage, Joey Martin. <laughs> Quite the intro. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Wally. Hey, thanks for making the time, Joe. I know you're a busy guy, you know, being a pro hockey player in the off season. <laughs> Summers are busy, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what a mess. I miss those days, you know? Fun times yeah. when you just like, you just, you, you exercise and yeah. then you have the day, right? Yeah, well, it's a lot tougher than that. You got to think of what, what, like, coffee shop to go to because there's so many. There's, there's what like lunch spot, people. right? Lunch spot too. I mean, yeah, it gets hard. It's hard. It, out it there. does. It yeah. Um, and then <laughs> when you get to the real world, uh, well, you work, Joe. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean in the summer? Yeah, yeah, it's a year-round thing. <laughs> they do oh. it all year. I don't know why. No. <laughs> why? <laughs> I don't know. I get into how we know each other, Joe. I did see you in the flash in person, not just in the shed. We had a time, didn't we? Ah, yeah, that was quite the weekend. I feel mm -hmm. like the stars aligned for, you know, so many people to come back into town. It was just, it was meant to be. It was everything we expected and more. You're right. The, you know, when something like that's coming up, the Josh Batch testimonial folks is what we're talking about. The anticipation is high, right? Like, um, you're, you're sitting in Cardiff waiting for the guys to show up. You're the guy that stays there all summer. You're not really sure what to do with yourself, what coffee shop to go to. And then all of a sudden the planes start landing in Cardiff, Wales, right? And the fellows start coming and the muck running starts, doesn't it? Oh, I mean, I remember like seeing the roster and then, oh. you know, it just kind of like every week, I feel like someone got added and more, and you know, then obviously it kept and building it, more. The, hype the, and then, you, you could say the snowball kept rolling, right? Yeah. And growing. <laughs> FOMO kick, yeah, FOMO kicks in. You don't want to like miss it. So like, you know, it's just, you I can't. mean, yeah, what an all-star all lineup of like just good people. Um, Dandies. I call them shed guys. And, yeah. And a lot of us hadn't seen each other like all together in a, in a long time. So. And I didn't even like, other than talking to them in my shed, I'd never really hung out with the new crew of devils after I stopped spray painting myself naked. Right. <laughs> right that yeah that's true like i had talked to jards and it's weird when i talk to people on here like i feel like i really get to know them and we're like brothers and we're buddies and um i had never really hung out with jards other than getting naked in front of him or like steven dixon talked with him in the shed you know and uh yeah. that then they're everything you hoped they would be when you hang out with them for a weekend right <laughs> yes yes they are you get to know i mean yeah that's an interesting tactic to 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 be naked in front of them before you meet them, but talk about breaking well, the well, ice, it, right? Breaking the ice, right? Once you see yeah. that thing, you know? That's that's breaking the ice. But mm -hmm. just, yeah, like you said, that was a weekend to remember. I mean, you guys did a great job coming coming over from Canada, battling the jet lag. There wasn't any, Joe. <laughs> you, you know, guys, if, you stay on, if you stay on Canada time, there's no jet lag. <laughs> it's kind of like, you guys might like, or like the walking dead after like day two, just like your body want like gravity want to take your body down. And I don't, you I just, don't know what you're talking about. I was fresh that whole weekend until hockey time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that game was so exhausting, Joe. You, you know, 
uh the great part about that weekend is the weather was was unbelievable it was like sunny so we, we were on the you know the patios because i've been here in Cardiff most of the summer and i'm telling you the weather has not been great so we were kind of blessed like well, i said everything just you know joe it's time. like i say these all these folks that are always looking at their phones and their apps about the weather i don't look at it I wake up with a good attitude and good things are going to happen. And you know what? We all woke up with good attitudes that weekend. <laughs> Except for when I had to play <laughs> hockey. <laughs> uh, but uh, that game was tiring after all the fun we had had. Um, I I was tired. But you know what, Joe? We finally got to play together, right? Sent Lorda right down to the second line, didn't we? We did, yeah. yeah we one, one two, didn't quickly. we? I think it did. Well, it was Haddad was taking control naturally of the bench and, you know. Well, and Haddadi and I got to play together and had a time that year, but me and you never, we never, we never did get to lace them up together, did we? No, we didn't. But I think Haddad, first time in testimonial history, he had a guy double shifting. (laughs) (laughs) He he enjoys the game and he he wanted to let everybody know he can still do it and he can, (laughs) right? He just loves it. Oh yeah, it was so fun. Just a good laugh. It was a good laugh. Um, and fun fact, Joe, is if I don't overconsume for two days straight, I do have a little bit better cardio than I did that night. So I've been going out with O'Reilly just down the road here. And last weekend, I took my son and my nephew to skate with him. And he had a crew of fellas that were getting ready to go on a golf trip on a bus all the way to Michigan right after the skate. So there's seven of them. So the end of the practice, I'm down with my son and nephew at the other end. He goes, Wally, get down here. I'm like, oh, dear, what am I getting into here? And he says, okay, we're having a weekend. Time to get a sweat in before we go. Four on four, game to five. Me with Kurt. Yeah. And so naturally, me and O'Reilly were on the same team. I'm in a track suit. But you know what? Instant chemistry, Nashville. In case you're wondering, we had instant (laughs) chemistry. We dominated, ran amok. Um, I may or may not have fake slap shot backdoor tap into win the game, right? You know, still got it, Joe. I mean, I believe it. Any video evidence of this? Well, there is a bunch of folks watching because O'Reilly, right? He's a pretty big star. Um, But you know what's neat about him is Joe. He's a shed guy. He's confirmed coming on. And after that skate, he's ready to go golfing with all his buddies. He goes to the locker room. All these girls are waiting to get stuff signed. He goes... Hold on one second. He goes, showers right away. He's in and out of the locker room within two minutes. And then he went out and signed every gal stick, talked to all of them, took pictures with all of them. And I tell you, he's like the superstar hockey needs, you know? Just a good guy. He seems like such a good guy. I wish he would have stayed in Toronto, but. uh, He's just a total winner is what he is. Yeah, he's a gamer. He's a winner. Just seems like a, like a troop bro taking time for you know for people well yeah, he's, he's my cut like, my uh, my conditioning was a factor again joe there's no doubt about it yeah. we played four and four for like 15 minutes straight there was no shifts it was it was one long shift for like 15 minutes i had to pace myself joe but i was making plays even if you're in good shape that's tiring even if you're in good shape so you're, good for you right i let i was you know i was f3 i let o'reilly get in there and muck it up i was i was high guy <laughs> <laughs> smart yeah so do you skate in the summer joe Yes, yeah, we do. Uh, oh. There's a group of us here that have been skating, you know, a few times a week. We've been ramping it up a little bit leading up to camp. So it's kind of like a, another reason why I like staying here in, in Cardiff is, you know, we have the, I'm right, right around the corner from the arena. We have yeah. the, you know, access to the gym as well. So well, it's really become your home, hasn't it, Joe? Isn't it interesting from way back in 2014, 15, when we were all flying in that same day. And we didn't really know where we were going or what we were doing. And then you see the big blue tent and then all of a sudden Cardiff's like your home, eh? Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, it, it is. Um, obviously I, I, I miss Canada and, you know, my family and all my friends are back there. And I, I went back and saw them this summer. It was a quick trip, but it's obviously, you know, nice to see them, but yeah, I'm just, this is, this is feels more like home right now. This yeah. Is, uh, I do know what you I'm mean though. Comf- where I'm happy and comfortable and, yeah, just really enjoy it here. Like I like I mentioned, I know the weather. We thought the weather was going to be a little nicer this summer. We had a few more planned. You know, we did some traveling, which we're thankful for. But, you know, we wanted to maybe explore Wales a bit more, maybe go like North Wales, West Wales. But on the weekends, it just hasn't been nice enough. So 
Right. Well, okay. I, uh, you know, the traveling when you're over there is the stuff you remember. I wish I would have seen Wales more, but my kids were too young. But pictures you see of like West Wales, it sure looks nice, right? Yeah, it looks really nice. A lot of nice beaches, even like, you know, a lot of nice places to go for hikes or go go camping or whatever. So there's a lot of things but, to do in Carved Wales too, right? There is a lot. Yeah. A lot of different lot of, patios you can go to over a weekend too. A lot of different patios, a lot of different restaurants, bars, mm. cafes. And we, we would be, I think the word is remiss if we don't bring up Chippy Lane because that place just got dominated that weekend, didn't it? Chippy Lane, yeah, it's uh, uh, like an art artifact in Cardiff, pretty much. It's like art, the artifact. Not I an think artifact, I, no land, land landmark. landmark. Artifacts like yeah. a thing, right? This is a yeah, yeah. This is a destination. People should travel from all over the world to Chippy Lane. Really, it's That's an experience, amazing. right? Right. I'd say between one and four a.m. on a Saturday, or so I guess Sunday morning. Hit it up, folks. It's 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 a memory, right? A lot of people yeah. watching to do down there and eating. Yeah, the sights are impressive enough. Even if you don't eat, you just got to take a stroll through there. Right. There's <laughs> there's grown men shitting themselves, right? Women, too, for that matter, right? Never witnessed that, but... Really? I mean, mm -hmm. Actually, I think me and your new coach witnessed that with Franny. Uh, Pete Russell, you got a new coach, and I was running amok on Chippy Lane with him, and we did witness a grown man with wet trousers in the behind area. <laughs> Wasn't solid what came out, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but I, I didn't see that. So anyways, you do have a new coach, Joe. It's different playing for different coaches, right? Makes hockey different. He's, it seems like a, right. he seems like a sweetheart of the shed guy though. I really liked him. I thought it was great that he's the new coach. He didn't really have that many ties to Batchy's testimonial. Obviously Batchy's back and they should never get rid of him. But um, he took the time. He was there the whole night. He was there from the time I showed up at the room, helping prepare, helping get things ready. And he was there at 4 a.m. with me at Chippy Lane, right? that That's a leader. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is a leader, isn't it? Yeah, like you said, he seems like a great guy. Um, you know, obviously, he's he's experienced now. He's, he's won the past few years. He's done great things with the GB national team. So that's exciting. What so I think's neat, um, I, I mean – I, I was fortunate enough to win in Denmark, the UK, and Germany. I find it neat as a head coach. All those leagues are different. They're very different vibes, different ways of playing. Yeah. He has won in different places, and where he goes, he wins. He wins with GB. He wins in Germany, which is a totally different game than what he would have been raised up in than the UK right. hockey, and he found a way to beat everybody. I think that's neat. Yeah, that's impressive. That's yeah, that's a good good point. Obviously, he's able to adapt, right? And mm -hmm. no matter what style of play it is, and which means he's a confident coach. Um, you know, I think he's going to be very demanding. It sounds like he's going to work us pretty hard, but I mean, that's what you, that's what you need if you want to win. Well, yeah, um, no, yeah. yeah, nothing worth winning was that ever came easy, right? No, so, you you got to put in the work to win, right? You yeah. don't just show no. up and do it. Yep. Yeah, I think if it was easy, it wouldn't be as satisfying. You but. Wouldn't. You know, what I always liked about you, Joe, and why you were my goat and why I got all silly there when I came back for Wally night was the way I always thought of hockey was it has to be a hockey family and everybody has to be invited wherever you're going and whatever you're doing. And it's the same when I coach under 11 or under nine gals or next year under 13 boys, everybody's invited no matter what we're doing. It's a team. It's a family. And you always did that. So you still hitting lunch with the fellas? Or are you too old now? Have you? No, no, no. Yeah, I'm you're still hitting, hitting lunches. Lunch. Yeah, you're hitting coffee. Lunch, yeah. yeah, coffees and lunch for sure. I mean, that's the stuff. That's hockey. I love. That's what I love about hockey. And I know those days, you know, aren't aren't gonna last forever. You gotta work so year I, round, I Joe. Sure. Year round. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So I, I make real. sure I try to soak it all in and try to be a part of part of it as you know as much as I can because. You know, we are very fortunate to be able to have, you know, we work all morning, we work hard, but we do our, have our afternoons. We have the luxury to go hang out and, you know, be away from the rink. And when and the day is kind of over, stuff. right? It's it, That's what I love about hockey. And you don't think of it when you're playing. You think of it when you're out and you're in your shed talking to dudes is the stuff I missed is going to work with the fellas, pushing each other, competing. I don't like those flow yeah. drills. They're boring. Flow drills suck. I like competing with my buddies. And then, you yeah. know, you get a little animosity up in that bitch. And then, you know, somebody wins and loses. And then you chirp each other in the room. And then you yeah. go have lunch, right? <laughs> that, honestly, that you you hit it 
nail on the head there. Like that it's so fun to practice to, I love those competition drills. And yeah. even though you're, they're teaming with your buddies, like I don't want, you know, if I'm playing against them, I don't want them to win and they shouldn't want me to win. And that's how right. You, and that's the chirping afterwards is yeah. yeah and you push then they got up. you that day and then they get to chirp you all the way through lunch. Right. Oh yeah. Like I always like think about like when we had like, like Bent Devolio and had dad, like those guys were like in practice were so competitive, almost like just like a game. Like it, it was like, we're playing a game and, but made practices like so much fun because you see like her dad lose and he's like, takes a slap shot, you know, <laughs> yeah, they get down so the ice, he's so mad. And we're all, everyone's kind of mad, you know, like practices ended, but then we go in the locker room and then everyone, and then everyone's like laughing, making fun of each other. You know, like, I, I think the best players are the most competitive. And I think they do have, like, I never really slam sticks or anything. Cause I think then you're letting the other team know they got you. But like when you get pissed off when you don't do things right. Or if someone takes your puck, I would get really pissed off when I knew I screwed up. And it's like, the coaches that have come over to let you know you screwed up, it's like, you don't have to tell me. I know I screwed up. You yeah. get over there. Don't talk to me. You know? uh, but yeah. like, it's like O'Reilly in the summer, man. He does these drills and I, I volunteered my services because I wanted to learn for my under 13 boys this year because we're going to run amok and win all Ontario and everybody else can come compete with us if they want. But I wanted to learn new drills with him because he had the coolest drills I'd ever seen when I skated with him years ago. And when he does these drills and I'm feeding him the pucks, like he gets pissed off when he doesn't do things clean. Like he gets mad. Yeah. He shoots pucks against boards. He slams sticks. Um, he wants to do things perfectly. And I think that's what makes him him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah, good point. I know his, yeah, I know the way he, I've seen kind of the way he trains. He's had of a bit of a unique style from what I've heard, like when he's doing whether it's in the gym or on the ice, he does more like quality over quantity. You know what I mean? Like if he's shooting pucks, like he's going to shoot 10 perfectly in the spot rather than like rapid fire 30 pucks. Do you know it's, what I mean? Uh, no, and like, it's interesting. It takes like focus. He, do, he does like, a drill and then we take a break and then we do another short drill. And it's like, I'm not doing the drills. I don't need to get better. I'm all done. So he'd do it. But then it's like, we did one timers in the slot and he doesn't just practice getting it in the wheelhouse. And that's what was cool about me helping him is I actually can put pucks wherever I want to still. And he was like, put three too far ahead of me, put three at my yeah. front leg, put three in the wheelhouse, put three at my back leg, and then put three where I can't one time it behind me. And then to see him and like, he doesn't want the pass tape to tape every time he's like, pass it into my skates or yeah. he does stuff in the neutral zone and it all makes sense. And it was pretty neat. He was explaining to me like why we're doing it what the reason was and to think he's a player not a coach that guy should be a coach someday <laughs> yeah maybe he will and that, that makes sense like most times in a game the the pass is not perfect you know actually you rarely yeah is the pass. right and that's rarely why the path right in your wheelhouse so yeah. practicing especially with bit. lordo passing it to you instead of me right <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it's not your wheelhouse <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry lord i was just joking but not really <laughs> uh but yeah like compete i i remember going to denmark and there's this tyler gatto fellow he won it three years in a row in denmark or whatever but we do the practice the drills at the end like three on three cross ice and if he lost i saw him throw his stick to the top of the arena like <laughs> way up there you know competitive yeah. people can snap right yeah like i like i, I like seeing that emotion from guys like sometimes i you think see, it's like funny <laughs> <laughs> I see you see like McDavid and Crosby in the NHL and every now and then they come they come to the the bench and they like slam the door and like or like you know sometimes they do break their stick and I kind of like like that because those are pretty reserved guys you don't right. see them usually right. do that and it's kind of nice to see it's like oh no like these guys these guys are they ultra get... competitors yes and like you know they expect themselves to be good and you know I it's do nice know. to see them show that kind of And emotion. I think you know too, Joe, but you're not a stick slammer either, just like myself. But you can get fired no. up, can't you? Yeah, I mean, definitely at times. I've seen I you mean, throw a water bottle off a guy's head once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dobbs gave me a couple games for that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you got to stick together, folks. You know, and a, I just shared that, Joe, on in my honey hole Insta there, the memories, because uh, when I knew I was having you on and then the memories start flooding back, yeah. that was a wild sequence when uh, Carl got clipped by the biggest loser in hockey. Um, and um, I was right there. And naturally, I 
you, you can't skate by an issue like that. So, you know, I mucked it up, did my best. I, th- I tried to go for the knockout punch, you know, I tried to hang yeah. in there and then throw like the big one and then hope you it hits. Well. I, I, I hung, I, I hung well. in there. Right. And then yeah. you felt like, you know, I just didn't get enough shots in on him maybe. So then when he was coming to the locker room, you, like it was probably early on in a period because it was a full water ball. You threw that right off his face, didn't you? Yeah. Ah, I don't know what I was really, th- I just remember being so mad that like he, he that he did that to Carl. Hit. It was so dirty. And then you, you came in so quick. So like that, that kind of didn't last. And then he kind of like, he gets kicked out of the game and he's almost like let free. Like and he's, at, and yeah, because I wasn't maybe his, tough enough nope. to do the deal, right? Yeah, it's kind of like, wait, he, he gets out of the game. He almost, like, let him off the hook and, like, keep him in the game, put him in the box, and then someone else, like, one of our, yes. you know, let, like, let Hendo after him or someone. And then, yeah. Like, then you learn not to. Or be, or beautifully Salters, right? Or, yeah, ba- yeah, or Batchy, had, you know. We had, yeah, we had you know, like, whoever. I mean, that's just, I know. That, that's kind of what I was going in my head. I was like, what? This yeah. guy's leaving? No. And I just yeah. grabbed I him. tried to give him the muffin mitts, right? I just, I, you know, I but did my best. Sent, right? He still sent the message like, hey, we're Sent the message, the yeah. I found it interesting, right? Because then that was my second last game of hockey ever. And we played that team that season. And Saltz tried to fight him. Batchy, Lurt. The guy was a big, I think it starts with a P. Um, but you do something like that, you have to fight people and it's not me. You have to fight. I was there and I did it, but you need to fight the real fighters. And, um, I just think that guy's a huge loser and he's never coming to my shed, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I also kind of believe if you play that way, you do have to answer the bell. And that's why, I mean, obviously like fighting in hockey is a sensitive topic, but the people that play the game and know the game, like it is a way to self police within the game. Otherwise players can take liberties, right? Only receive a penalty. Dops can a- only do so much getting like, punched uh, like, in the face means a lot more. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a tricky one. Um, I don't think it's that I, tricky. I, no, I don't either. Maybe I'm just trying to be politically correct, but like, you're not you know, a fighter. I'm not a fighter. And we both think fighting should, and there, but there's a reason, like, I, I feel like I play the game hard and clean, but like, right. I also know like that there's things on the ice I can't do because I'm going to have to like answer the bell to one of their tough guys. And like, well, and, and that's, exact, that that's exactly what fun. happened to me. That's exactly what happened to me in the coast. I got there out of college and I thought I could still do the dirty stuff I was doing in college. And I did yeah. it in pro. And then I got the wheels beat off of me a couple times. Sometimes there was some third man in on my team helping a brother out. But um, I learned very you, quickly. There was two or three say. things that I did. And as soon as that big guy comes off the bench and is skating at me, the little guy, I'm like, oh, dear, I shouldn't have done that. You know, and then yeah, you don't. Play. And then you play a clean, hard game. And, you know, if you do those things. Right. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's why it's the nature of the sport. It kind of just like kind of needs and, and it, it's ironic but it makes the game like safer mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. a lot of people might not understand but it, it, i mean it does <laughs> fighting makes yeah. hockey safer and there is no doubt about it and um the people that try and get it out of the sport are the people that don't play it <laughs> that's probably a fair yeah <laughs> it, it, yeah just thinking I mean, out loud I, folks it, you know yeah right yeah. At grandma's cottage, it's a half day. It's a fun day. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> it's Friday. It's Friday. Friday, baby, all day. It's spitballing. Folks, don't forget it's Friday. Have fun, right? Right. Um, I might have had an inkling of an idea this was happening, Joe, but one of the biggest legends of hockey has called it a day. Stephen Dixon. Yeah. Mm. yeah sad when one of those guys are done eh because you you know so we went to that testimonial and we all talked about it while we were sitting around tables hockey guys being hockey guys at its finest and we talked about how we're a dying breed and they just don't make them the same way as those fellows that were there losing a guy like steven dixon is like losing a gem (laughs) yeah like it really is i mean anyone that knows him or has played with him like just you know, you say like, oh, you play with Steven Dixon, you know, Steven, like usually the reaction is just like a smile and a laugh, like, oh, that guy's the best, right? Right. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting in hockey that you're, 
what you're about and who you are, it really does travel because hockey guys talk and it's not a big world when it comes to hockey. And I bring up a Maritimer, uh, the guy that's going to play for the Chocolate Manchester Storm next year. And I just bring up his name. He's like, well, he's a legend everywhere, right? (laughs) Good stuff. Yeah, he's, I know, Dixon's such a legend. I mean, just like such a, such a good guy, best teammate play so hard we'll do you know the lowest mate like whatever you ask of him the coach asked him he'll do uh, with a smile on his face yeah with a smile on his face but then it's just like the happiest guy never like never stressed never worried never mad never having a bad day just never happy happy to be alive and every day is a good day for living making everybody around him laugh smile you know do you know what i wrote to him joe and no. I'm going to bring this up now. I've never let anybody know what I texted him when I found out he retired. I was out walking the dog. It was late. I was thinking. And I wrote to him and I said, Stephen, now that you're done, we should start an agency. And I said, me and you, and we could get partners, shed guys around the world and all help each other. And we should start this. And he wrote back, brother, that is not a bad idea. And I said, well, I know what you're about. I know who you are. And I think people would want a guy like you representing them. I'm like, I don't know how much time I have in a day the way I'm going, but I think this is a good idea. <laughs> you know? Hey, so, yeah. You imagine me and Dicko teaming up and then recruiting some shed guys from different countries. That guy's been everywhere. Think about it, folks. It could work. If people want our services, just let us know. And then maybe this thing will start, right? <laughs> Got to get it out there to know. And now it's out there, folks. The Dicko Wally Shed Guy Agency. (laughs) Seriously, fun is fun, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyways, another way we know each other. You know who I'm having on next week? Doug Clarkson and Nicole Clarkson. Nice. They are now fresh parents, and we're going to talk about that. And you were roommates with them your first year in Cardiff. Isn't it a small world? Small world, yeah. Well, Dougie's the reason I came to Cardiff. He mm-hmm. signed, and then uh, I think he was talking to Lordo, and Lordo, you know, I think he just mentioned to Doug he, if he knew a centerman and kind of like reached out to me. So that's how I came to Cardiff. Right, and that's how hockey works. I went to Germany because Brandon Dietrich. They asked him if he knew a right winger, and he was like, "Yeah, I do." <laughs> right. And now Dougie's, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he's working with uh, Andrew Roth and their police officers in the same, I think they're in the same area. But well, you know what? Job. They were like together and now Dougie's just, uh, relo- well, he's relocated. He's gotten out of the big okay. smoke. Yeah. He's into the okay. suburbs now. Yeah. Family right. life, right? Family life. Yep. Mm-hmm. But small world, they were working together, playing, you know, it's just. It's a small world because Hoth was my roommate at the testimonial and we had a time, right? It's nice right. reconnecting with guys in the shed and in real life, right? Yeah, yeah, always is. Fun is and fun. Fun is fun. And Dougie's one of the best dudes going. He also sat beside me on the bus that year. That was my favorite year of hockey. We would sit at that back table, right? And uh, you get to sit with a big goof like that every day. It makes hockey fun, doesn't it? Another guy who's always happy, too. Right? He really is. Yeah. Always. Yeah, doesn't have bad days, that's for sure. No. Just teach me how to Dougie, right? (laughs) Do you know what's fun, Joe? I still in how we know each other. I remember looking at my notes, but um, I find it neat that like when you're done and this all comes to an end, you'll always have that story of that short fat guy that came all the way over to Canada, spray paint himself with the goat 88 on the back, right? Like that's a fun memory, isn't it? And best part about it was your family was in attendance that night to see the display. JJ was there. JJ was there, yes. Southern that was Cup a... loser. <laughs> Lost to me. <laughs> Sorry. He won. He did, oh, he, he did win. Yeah. Okay, so I don't have to feel bad. Sorry, JJ. You won too. Yeah. We were on the same... T- yeah, we won the Southern Cup. He was the... Small the world, cap. folks. I beat Joey's brother for the Southern Cup. Right? <laughs> uh. Yeah. Then I think they beat you the next year. Oh. No, not the next year. Sorry you beat us in Game 7. Makes me want to puke. I don't want to talk about it. They probably won after that. You yeah. Know? Sometime after that, but, but it's anyway, pretty pretty neat easy. memory, right? When your brother's there with his wife, and you yeah. got the whole family, and then a guy gets topless, spray painted eighty eight the goat on his back, like that's fun memory for the family, right? That's a good memory. I I bet that wouldn't happen again, you know, with anybody else other than you. I think you know that's 
Right. That was uh, it's not many times that's happened in the world, Joe. That's no, that, that's what I mean. I, I can't imagine that's I, happened before. Right. I don't, yeah, I doubt it'll happen again. Right. Like Hotham came over for a Hotham night, shirts on, no paint. You guys lost, right? <laughs> yeah. He didn't get the memo. I thought the bar had been set, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they should have waited. Um, for they should have brought in other guys before you. You set the bar too high. I can't believe they had me back, and that's why I thought I had to pay them back for being so nice, right? And it's interesting. Yeah. Days like that are like life changing days. That is what made me realize how much I missed that guy. Uh, also got me out of my shell more. That like I didn't care what people thought. I thought I was on the other side of the world, and nobody would really know what I was up to. But that's untrue with social media. Uh, with work knew about it. My team at work knew about it. Uh, but then when uh, everybody thought it was funny instead of that, like, I'm an idiot, then I was like, oh, so I can be myself, like, all the time? Like, not just hockey guy. I can be hockey guy all the time? And my life's way better now, you know? Life-changing stuff. Thanks, Todd. Toddy. Life-changing right? week. It really was. And now you have a memory for life, too. And, I, you know, I'm your biggest supporter, yeah. Joe. Some good pic- There were some good pictures, too. At the center ice, you dropping the puck with the shirt off. Like, it's pretty epic. <laughs> Right. Um, well, looking back on it, the after game there where I got topless at um giving out the man of the match award to you. Um, geez, well, that was, was yeah. that was yeah, pretty aggressive to do that, right? Yeah, but like you said, you just that's you flapping well, your wings. Well, you, you scored are you, are. You, you scored the game winning goal, got to wave a flag, right? Everybody's happy, winning's fun, right? Everyone went home happy. Joe, I've never asked you this. What's your favorite oh. chocolate bar? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jeepers, eh? My favorite? Do you know that fun is frowned upon in Cardiff now? I heard that no. the, the, yeah, the security guards that, um, well, I I don't know if they're nice securities, but I th- they were a shed sponsor that we talked about and got them back in there. I heard they were they were patting people down for chocolate at one point. I really, I didn't know that. Tastes- you keep your hands off people's pockets and you let them bring the chocolate in. What's your favorite chocolate, <laughs> Joe? <laughs> I'd have to say it's probably Snickers. Oh, Jesus, you're bringing on peanuts again. Oh, can't you? Yeah. yeah. But I, I Allergies, told, man. I don't really, I'm not a big like chocolate bar. I'm I more know, like you're a protein salt. shake type of a guy, full no, roller no, guy, right? I'm not. New I'm school. Like, salty. I like like, like salty. Like chips. Yeah, you want bags of chips popcorn. thrown on the ice? No, I don't want anything thrown on the ice for me. But I'm just telling you. I know cool. you never want it to be about you, Joe. That's why I like you so much. You just want to be one of the guys and run amok. I get it. I want to blend in. Yeah, I do so. know. You know, in Germany, <laughs> they make you wear gold helmets. It's the stupidest thing in hockey. Yeah, they did that uh, in Norway too. Mm. When you just want to be one of the guys, on. and they stick one of those on you, can get you yeah. really pissed off. You know. <laughs> seriously uh but that yeah i understand so you're not really a chocolate guy eh? that you know what uh, that's upsetting i think mo, mo mosey's back now he's kit kat get problem. that he's right kit kat, so he can yeah uh, let the fans make it rain kit cats for him i um, think i and having mosey back he's a fun guy and he's a teammate and he's one of those guys that's happy every day and uh yeah has a smile on his face and it's fun to be around. And he's another guy I didn't really know other than getting naked in front of. Right. And now I know a bunch of people. My hockey family's growing a lot, Joe. I can imagine. Yeah. Really it all started with my tally whacker. Yeah. You've, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've really, uh, you, you've got, a, you've branched out. That's for sure. But mm. like you said, I, I'm, I'm excited to have Mosey back. He is like, he's so funny. <laughs> Such a good player too. So fast, but like, he's a guy. Yeah. Like, it won't be quiet in our room, that's for sure. <laughs> and you don't want a quiet room. You don't. That's the thing. No. no. Quiet rooms talk. are losing teams. Yeah, yeah. So he's gonna he's gonna be an awesome, you know, addition. Obviously, he's back. So and Kit Kats, folks. We already know that. Kit Kat get that. The Sheffield Steelers banned fun after Kit Kat get that. He ran a muck, one man of the match. They win the game. And the arena, nothing against the Steelers, folks. You're part of my squad. But they shut down fun after that. They got the arena shut down the Steelers fun, right? He had to come to Cardiff. Kit Kats are allowed in Cardiff, right? Security guards. (laughs) 
you just go on wherever they allow Kit Kats now. That, that's <laughs> until that's, get, until they get that's how the Dicko and Wally agency works. <laughs> you got to go where the fun is. <laughs> uh, yeah, fun stuff though. But it's 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 good for a coach because I'm a coach having a guy that can play forward or D. Um, when I have a swing guy like that, kids are sick, kids are hurt, whatever's going on. Um, that a guy can switch back and forth and do well at both. That's that's a that's a big up for a coach, you know? Yeah, it's valuable. It's impressive too to be able to do that playing professional hockey, you, be comfortable you're, switching positions. You're absolutely right. I had a hard enough time just figuring out right wing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in one position. <laughs> I got my guy. He's yeah. the D bad. I gotta wait till right offense. Here we go. <laughs> Um, okay, cutting edge question because it is the talk of uh <clears throat> the EIHL and perhaps just or and Wales. The new logos, Joe. Yeah. They came out yesterday. Oh yeah, I was there. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Good stuff. Do I like it? I like I, it. Yeah, where do I start? Like you like I, it. I personally like really like it. Is that right? I yeah, I, I really like it. I think like it takes a minute. Obviously, it's kind of shocking. It's like, you know, we've had that old logo 26, 27 years. So I know it's, you know, it's a big deal for a lot of people. Um, I was. Rebranding is an interesting night. thing, right? I went through it in the real world. I got, I, yeah. I started working at Superheat and we had a logo and they were certain colors. And then we did a rebranding and switched the logo and switched the colors and it was it was interesting everybody's feedback right after because people don't like change we we yeah i think but they, then you think, learn that maybe maybe it's good maybe change is so, okay right so here's my thoughts like obviously people don't like change um i think they anticipated that kind of response i think there was a i was a little disappointed i saw like on twitter last night there was there was just a lot of negativity and I understand like you can have your, you can have your opinion. You don't have to love it. Even if you don't like it, like, okay. But like, I just feel like social media, you know, has gotten just out of hand and it's just been really negative. And it's like sad to see. Cause like, I feel like my, my first, like, to be honest, I got rid of Twitter today because it, it's just been too much. And it's not just because of like, the hockey is kind of just like, you know, everything, the way the world is right now. It's like nobody. Negativity. Can... Negativity just, yeah. is exhausting. It's, like, it's just negative and, and mean. And, you know, it's like everybody, if your opinion's right and other people's aren't, like nobody's looking at the other side of things. Um, it's just become a little bit too much. And then I think after all of the stuff I saw last night, I I don't know. It, it bothered me because like, I like the logo, but even if I, I didn't, I'm backing this team because I play for the Cardiff Devils. Yes, right. the logo is on our jersey, but like it's just I'm a logo. Our, <laughs> I'm representing our team. Like I'm sticking well, you're representing the Cardiff, club. you're like, representing Wales, you're representing Wales, all your yeah, like, teammates, the organization, the family. We still, pl- we still play for Cardiff. We're playing the same rank. We have the same fans. Like, what has really changed? The logo <laughs> went from yeah. the front of a devil to now a side view of a devil. And they took out <laughs> devils. At, like in the grand scheme of things, like as much as people kicked off about it, it's really not like a, mo- it's not a monumental difference. And coming from me, like that old logo, I love that logo. Like that, I, it's sentimental to me that that logo, when I see it, it's like, I, it reminds me of like the championships that we've won, the jerseys, the pictures that I'm in with that logo. Like it means a lot to me, but I feel like. It's well, like that's now- what's interesting for a guy like me, right. That sees this new one and. I'm never going to have memories as a player with that logo. And it is quite different than the old one. And I really like the old one because I still, I don't know. It's interesting. And like you said, the pictures, the memories, you see that logo, you've, that was what you were into. And it's going to be weird seeing you guys in that logo next year. I'm just saying for me over here, yeah. that's not a part well, of it, I think, but I also yeah. understand it because they've had some flip flopping with coaches and whatnot and finding their groove since Lorda left. Now that they found their guy, he's going to be their guy. And it's probably a pretty good time to start or fresh. Right. And like, I like that old logo is now it's not, it's not erased. It's not like it's gone. It's 
I look at it as like it's cemented in history. Like that logo is there representing 26, 27 years, a lot of good memories there. And I've seen the new logo on all of our equipment and gear and everything. And it looks really good. And that's why I think like, I really like the logo because I've seen it on a lot of things right now. And I just feel like it might take time for people to like it. Um, I think people, I just wish there was a little more positivity. I wish there was a few more people backing the club. Twitter is the worst because then you get like fans from around the league pouring gasoline on the fire and trolling, you know, like even if it was the best logo ever, they, they if they actually thought that they would still get our fans riled up by saying like, it's terrible, blah, blah. And then our, our fans have taken the bait and now it's just getting worse and worse. And this, it was disappointing because like, I'm so excited for the season coming up. A lot of us are, we looks like we got a really good team. We got a new coach, great coach. We're so focused and motivated on, you know, winning again. And then like this, this logo thing has caused so much negativity. That's just like, I don't know. It's yeah. Just, it, it's a little just, and the other thing i want to say is like i understand there's been fans here for a long time before i've been here and i understand maybe to them like changing a logo that's been here for 26 years is it's but well, there was it's one hard, there, you know? there they, was they one was... before ours right there was a different one i saw like a timeline it was 10 years 86 to whatever and then the new one came in like they have switched well, the logo they have rebranded the apparently but Apparently, when they switched from that logo to the the old the the sorry the logo we just changed, there was a lot of like backlash too. Um, so maybe you just kind of like you need to give people time to like it. Um, the other thing is like, I mean, I'm just a player, but from the business side, like I trust I trust Todd a lot. He's done a lot for this club, and I feel like people forget that. Like when Todd and the new ownership took over the team, like look where they took it from what it was to where it is now. Yeah. Like how, how have we not, why do we not like trust him yet? He knows the business and, this well, is and it's business. not like they haven't thought all like they're all <laughs> smart guys, right? They almost gave me 2.3% of the team. They're all smart guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like they thought about this, they, they would have, reviewed, right. like, they, they, they would have reviewed this a thousand right. times. They would have talked about this at the, the, the stampede in Calgary. Maybe they were in one. I don't know, but like they, they've talked about this. They've gone back and forth about this. There would have been so many different ideas and different ways of going. And this is what they come up with. And it's like, just relax folks. Enjoy the game. It's hockey. It's supposed to be fun. It's just, just the logo. <laughs> and, you know. Yeah. Just, I just wish people, you know what? And like I'm saying, like you can have your opinions. It's fine. But like, let's just be a little nicer on social mm. media. Do you know what I mean? Like we're just getting a little too, a little too negative and, at the end of the day, like we're all we're all in this together. If you're a Cardiff fan, like we're all we're all rooting and playing for the same club. It's and it takes team. everybody to win and everybody on the same page. And you keep bringing yeah. that negativity to the rink; it's going to get exhausting for everybody. So sh- just just enjoy the ride, right? Yeah, let's get some like leaders, fans out there to be like, no, you know what, this is it. You know, let's let's jump on. Let's let's all jump on the bus. Yeah, and let's let's. Let's get in this together, you know? Right, because the, bu- the bus is left, folks. Like, this, we're on the bus. We're riding the bus. This and is the like bus. So, like, cheer up like, and enjoy it. <laughs> and last night, I was walking around the bar with the jersey on. I was talking to a lot of our fans. And obviously, a lot of people are, like, looking at it like, you know, I just I don't know what I think yet. And, you know, like, that's fair. It might take a little bit. But a lot of, like, the feedback was, like, pretty positive, you know, from the people I talked. Obviously, you had some people that, like, no, I don't like it. And, you know, like I said, that's. You know, that's your opinion. That's you know okay. what you have yeah. to do, Joe? What? Well, you have to win. So then there's a photo of guys winning with that logo on. Whatever Fair. you want to yeah. win, Challenge Cup, League, Playoffs, all of the above, you got to win so then everybody can shut yeah. their mouths and then there's a picture of all the fellows wearing that logo with a trophy and everybody will be like, remember that year? What a great logo. Yeah. Winning, <laughs> winning always takes care of Winning always takes care of everything. But, uh, I think maybe when the people, I think when, when the fans see it on like our, all of our equipment and, you know, all, all the gear and everything, I I mean, I I hope they'll, they'll come around. Um, But, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. We're the same team. We're uh, yeah. (laughs) They're the same guys going out there and putting on a Jersey and trying to win the game and everybody should get behind them and cheer for them or not. (laughs) 
I'm still out there playing, representing this club city team that I love. And I feel like the fans, I would, I just wish no. And obviously it's, this isn't all of them, but just, I would just wish some of them would have that mentality a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That's all. I do know. I do know. Yeah. Um. So last season you had new line mates, eh? Cox and Sanford. Yeah. Mm. Players. Those guys are players. They're players, <laughs> eh? That uh, one yeah, guy. Yeah, that was. Sand Probably. goal Sanford. He had 38 goals just in the just in like the elite league. That's not even challenge cup stuff, eh? 38. Yeah, yeah just one of those like natural goal scorers, you know? Mm. Um kind of like you don't think he's in a dangerous spot, and then he all of a sudden is, and he just like he's got a great shot, accurate shot. Um, and then obviously like Coxie is like such a playmaker. A guy like Two on one passes, like he'll hit that triangle through the D stick, like every time. You right. know, he's going under so, it or over it. Those guys he likes to go under it. He's going, he's going under. Yeah, he's always like he's waiting. He's just waiting for it to open up, and you can tell he's baiting the D, baiting the D, and he's waiting for that D to make like one little move, opens up that triangle under his stick, and then he's slipping it through. And it's that, like yeah, you're, it's you're interesting it. thing. You know to, it's interesting though because it takes the other guy on the other side. Now that I coach and I'm trying to keep, teach kids, and they got so much to learn. It's like on a two on one, if that sticks in the passing lane, if that blade's sitting there and it's in between you two, you better move up ahead or move back a bit to get yourself yeah. open, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a, it's on the other guy. His job is to, okay, I'm not in a good enough passing lane. I've got to either speed up or, or, or you know, slow down. The a play bit. away from so the puck is, is like what a, I've noticed. It's the chemistry, most right? It's, yeah. It is chemistry. So you got yeah. that with those fellas, yeah, eh? Or, you know what's interesting that you have chemistry with those guys is I've reached out to them about coming to the shed. They don't even write back. I don't have chemistry with them. <laughs> well, I, I can uh I can have I can have a word with them. We can get them in the shed. I'm if sure. they if they don't want to come to the shed, that's fine. Lots of people to talk to, right, Joe? <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they would. But you know, we'll sometimes it hurts when like your old team and like they're you know the guys running the muck and like that they, they see it, they don't even write back. It's like you don't you know. Okay, well, uh, just so just so folks know, I'm sponsoring the captain of the Manchester Storm next year. Next year, when you guys play Manchester and there's a two ales and hockey tails logo on the captain's jersey, you know, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm not sorry, right? Yeah. There, there's the. <laughs> You know, Expand it's going to be funny. Brand. It's going to be funny because there's going to be chocolate all over the place in Manchester. And it's going to be hilarious that there's a guy in professional hockey. That's a captain with two ales and hockey tails logo on his Jersey. Right. And I'm sorry, Joe, Look how far you've come. Right. I know, <laughs> but I'm still a devil for life. Right. But um, love to see the storm win a trophy too. Right. I think it'd be fun to see the captain holding a trophy with two L's and hockey tails logo on it. And I know that hurts some devils fans, but they have supported me. And if you're on my team, you're on my team. You guys are on my team. So are they. You, in a perfect world, you'd like to see everybody win. Right. Only shed guys. Yeah. 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 No, I, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of them out there. There is a lot of them out there and there's a lot more to find too. Cause shed guys, no shed guys. And uh, the lineup's quite long actually. Okay. Better keep moving Joe. Right. <laughs> I gotta get back to the beach here at Grandma's Cottage. <clears throat> Poster picks. Okay. Where shall we start? So JJ, the captain of the Thoral Blackhawks, is holding a trophy. Is that the Sutherland Cup? So that's our league. Mm, that's that like our cherry league. cup here around there. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. call that like the golden horseshoe. We I think we just right. beat Niagara Falls and we're then you go on to the Sutherland Cup. Is that you beside him? That's not you. That's me, yeah. You've really I'm grown up. Your hair's gotten a lot darker, Joe. Yeah, well, I think you've that's changed when, a lot. Hey, were you still going? I think that was when at we, that you know, point. You know, you would like dye your hair blonde for like playoffs. I Jeez. think there was some of that going on. You looked a lot yeah. different. I even yeah. zoomed in. I'm like, that's not him. I think I'm 15 or 16 at that. Winning at with that. your brother would be pretty cool, eh? That was pretty cool, yeah. Especially like he was the captain, so I kind of got to like watch him and you know learn from him. Even you know, even yeah, though it's, I do it's know. junior hockey in your hometown, it was like the coolest thing. Well, and he obviously raised you right because you're my type of guy. Um, 
one guy we can't move past because I got it written on here is one of your poster picks is celebration with the fellas after a goal with everybody, not just yourself celebrating. And it's Benty coming in hot. And I yeah. tell you, Benty was at the uh, testimonial and whew, he's a dandy too, eh? <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, he's uh, another another thorough guy. Um, another team we guy. We played together. Team guy, just another awesome, happy guy. One mm-hmm. of the guys you love to have in the locker room. Um, Somebody pick- stop me. <laughs> <laughs> Inside oh, jokes, yes. fellas. Sorry, folks. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, no, that was, uh, I think that picture was playoff game before the big playoff weekend in Nottingham against Sheffield. And uh, I think that's what that celebration was from. So we were pretty wow. pumped up. Um, I always say you win with the best people, maybe not the best players, the best people. And the people I met that have become devils after I left, that's why you fellas won. You know, Benty, Jards, Dicko, the list goes on. Like, you win championships with people like that. Yeah. You got to have a close, a close locker room, right? It's a long, it's a, it's a long year. Like you, you have to be willing to do it for each other, right? It can't yeah. just be about you, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. Poster pick. Who's drinking out of the Stanley cup. That's not you. That's me. You still yeah. dyeing your hair at that point. No, Why are you I drinking out of the Stanley cup. So that was actually in Sean Benavolio's basement in Thorold. It was when uh, Nathan Horton won the Stanley Cup. Oh, and, a former uh, Thorold Blackhawk that is not a Sutherland Cup champion. No, he's a, Thor- uh, a Thorold Blackhawk alumni. And uh, yeah, he when he had his day with the Stanley Cup, he brought it to to Thorold to Sean's house. And Sean had a bit of a party. So that was in his basement. It was That's uh, cool. You guys yeah, were running well, amok with the Stanley Cup in, his, in Benji's yeah. basement? Yeah, I think I was, I can't remember. I think I might have been like my second year, like college at that point. And you know, it's like, you can't drink out of it. Like, you'll, you'll never win it. It's like bad luck. I was like, I'm, I'm drinking, drinking out of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I'm all, <laughs> um, small world, though, is like Nathan Horton was on that team and he was like 15 years old. And we had to shadow him to win. We had Kyle Rank who became that became his role in college and pro hockey. Yeah. And he made it to the AHL as like a shadow or guy bugging people. And it started with Nate, Nathan Horton in that final series. He was like a third, fourth liner and Nathan Horton was having his way with us as a 15 year old. And then we, 15 year old. And then we put him on him and it helped things out. And, um, interesting small world. And then he, it sucks though. What happened with that guy's career? Because, you play against the guy in the Southern Cup Finals. He's a young guy that's running amok, and you're like, I've never seen a player like this before. And yeah. then with the injuries and stuff, it's always fun to see guys you've played against do well, right? Oh, it is, yeah. I know. It's unfortunate he had some injuries later on in his career, but at least he got to win a Stanley Cup. So Right. And so you drank out of that cup, and then the other thing I got written down is another poster pick is you drinking out of a cup. It's not the Stanley Cup. But it's an EIHL cup. And isn't it nice when people make trophies you can drink out of making them cups instead of like yeah. the opposite? So if you think Let us old... drink out of it, folks. We're hockey players. We want to drink out of cups. Yeah. Make Maybe them cups. I know, but all like think about all the other professional sports. Like, you know, I don't think like which ones can you drink out of besides the Stanley Cup? Well, and obviously that one in the EIHL, but like make them all like that, folks. We want to drink I mean, like, them. That's our thing, right? If anybody's listening to us at my grandma's cottage, make trophies with yeah. cups, right? So we can put stuff in them and you know, drink. You know what we're talking about? Yeah, we do. Because like under 11, win my first uh, tournament as a head coach, um, at the first tournament I ever went in, the fellas ran a muck and won the trophy. And I got those fellas filling that thing up with Coca-Cola, right? <laughs> <laughs> Memories, there you go. Right? Yeah. Just think about it, folks. Okay. You guys got a dog? Poster pick. You and the gal got a dog on the ice. Yeah, we do. A little uh Australian shepherd. She's a she's a tiny little thing. Mm. She's like uh yeah, she's she's small. She's awesome. She's only like a year old right now. She's uh a lot of energy when we're outside, but inside she's she's awesome. Well, that's good because puppies can be annoying. I know mine was. Anyways, next poster yeah. pick is uh, you're at the top of a cliff somewhere with a nice river below you. Where is that? You guys do some traveling, eh? Oh, that, 
that was in Norway. That was uh, it was called Prekestolen, and it was basically you. Is that you called a up fjord? That is a fjord. Yes. So you hmm. hike up top, and it was pretty. You're you're like really high up there. It's kind of a surreal background. And you had to you had to hike things. all the way up there. Yeah, it actually wasn't. It wasn't that. It was a gradual climb. To be honest, it wasn't that bad. And yeah. then one of my pictures, actually, if everybody knows, uh, like Boston Levi, uh, McNamee, former Devil, yeah. his first album cover is actually a picture of me on top of that uh, Prekasolan, and he used that for his album cover. So after, are this, you being I'm serious? Yeah. yeah. His album cover is you on a fjord. But it's like it's in it's in the distance, so you can't tell it's me. It's just like it's almost like a silhouette of someone standing on top of like this, oh. you know, this big. That sounds lovely. Rock. It that is sounds lovely. It's kind of like the silhouette of the shed guy and shed gal jerseys that um we're making with my kids' hockey stance, right? And it's a shed guy and shed gal, and we're making jerseys, folks. If you want one, let me know. Um, and it it's a shed guy and shed gal. It's my kids' hockey stance, right? nice silhouettes can be fun right yeah and i gotta bring this up because i always forget to do stuff is there's a fella i don't know if you know this joe um i had on james bateman who's a kid whose dad had a stroke in sheffield a massive stroke and they're steelers fans and they are part of my hockey family the steelers i know it's weird joe it's hard to grasp but the steelers (laughs) are part of my hockey family and um the kid came on, talked about their situation, what was going on. And then there's a fella, Dave Wilcox. I just had him on episode 300 something. He is going to bicycle, Joe. You're going to be playing in the hockey match when this happens. He's going to bicycle 600 kilometers. He's going to go from where the fella had a stroke, the closest arena to there, all the way to Cardiff. Then he's going to go all the way to Cardiff to Sheffield on his bicycle. And he's going to wow. arrive. He's going to arrive. When you guys are set to play the Sheffield Steelers in preseason, September 16th or when does... Yeah, so, yeah, that sounds about... I mean, I'd have to check, but sometime early in September. So this guy's or doing it. And when you guys are getting ready to play hockey and compete against the Steelers in preseason, which actually doesn't matter, folks. Um, this guy, what actually matters is this guy is going to bicycle 600 kilometers and arrive before that match. And I hope to a lot of people celebrating what he's done to raise money for the Batemans and his recovery, Rich's recovery, right? Amazing. Wow. Amazing. Right. That's, that's, and that's and that, that started talking in my shed that this guy got inspired to do that. And I, you know what? I can take that with me, right? Earned it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. That's pretty impressive. That's a, that's a far ride. Um, right. But very impressive. That's pretty amazing. Good for him. Hopefully, um, hopefully the weather is nice for him. And, that and hopefully people back this. And there is a GoFundMe yeah. page. Check out Velo Dave on Instagram. His name's Dave Wilcock. And he is going to run amok and raise money to help a family and people helping people. It's a powerful thing, right, Joe? That's right. That's awesome. I like hearing that. It's good stuff. Yeah. And like the hockey family coming together, right, folks? Devils, you can get involved too. Help out the Steelers family. I know they're Steelers fans, but you know what? We're all one hockey family and we're all just enjoying a sport and having fun. And some of us are lucky enough to get paid for it. Right. That's right. Uh Anywho poster picks, (laughs) the George (laughs) brothers with a trophy with you. And of course, fat Allen's with them. Yeah. Always there, isn't he? Legends of Cardiff. I think it's the you know, since the first time I came to Cardiff, those guys have just been the nicest guys. Just awesome to have. I always say like, like when people bring teams together. Those three, yeah, they bring they help bring a team together. They help bring a team together at that golf tournament our very first year. The very first yeah. year when we met them and we all got sitting around that table at the end of the golf tournament that helped bring us together. That helped us become a team. Yeah. Even like when my family comes over, friends, they're like, you know, Those the first guys. people to go up to them and introduce themselves and, you know, all, you know, just help them out, ask if they need anything. They're just such good people. Yeah. And, you know, they're, and they're fun people. Mind. Fun people, good people. I mean, yeah, they're, they're that's awesome. They've that's been, how you win, folks. Fun, good people. Yep. They don't even have to lace up the skates. They just have to be around, right? 
Just be around. <laughs> Poster Peck, you played an NHL preseason game. You're beside Johan Franzen on the blue line. Yeah, that was that's my claim to fame there. Um, that it wasn't a preseason game. I don't like think a, your claim to flame flame the flame is playing a preseason game in the NHL, Joe. It is having a guy spray painted as you in the crowd in Cardiff, Wales. True. Okay, maybe that's yeah highlight number. Right. Yeah, that's fair. I forgot about that. Whatever you think is your highlight, that's fine. <laughs> well, that was like a. It was like a, they called it a red white game. It was basically the Red Wings and Grand. I was at the Grand Rapids camp. And they had a red white game, so they you know mixed the wings, Grand Rapids teams, and we kind of had a inner you know game against each other. Yeah, but at the time it was like like Datsu, Datsu and Zetterberg were like on the wings there, and obviously Franzen and like Bertuzzi and Datsu was like my favorite player. Um, so right. it was pretty cool to like play in that game and kind of like even like before the game, I'm like watching I'm like tape a stick and stuff. I was just like, this I do know what you mean though, this, and it, it can get it. Yeah. How'd you play that game? I actually played pretty well. I remember like feeling pretty good after the game. It was just like a really cool experience because I just was, I got asked to go to the Grand Rapids camp. Basically, they're like, it's one of those like, go oh, come for a tryout, but you're just a filler, right? Like, oh, you're, a you're filler. not there yeah. trying out, they just need some bodies. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're they just need bodies but i'm like yeah, of course i'd love to love to go do that and then i didn't even know um like th- halfway through camp that they're like oh yeah we've got this red white game we're playing against the red wings i was like oh that's pretty cool and like I mean, so did dad suk and zetterberg play in the game yeah like the whole all the, the whole team so hmm. that was like pretty cool and we're all cool. kind of hanging out before the game and I, I just i just wasn't like expecting that isn't it weird how they're like normal guys too I found it weird when I got it. I know. I know. It was there, funny. And actually I wore number I wore number ninety in that I don't in that picture. And the year before that it was Medano was wearing ninety. So like those like Franz and them were like, Oh, you're wearing ninety? Like you're wearing like <laughs> Medano's number? Like, I don't know. Like <laughs> Yeah, they gave it to me. me. You know? <laughs> what do you want me to do? I was, yeah, I was happy to be. Just happy to be here. <laughs> oh man, well it's it's cool oh. though. It's like uh, when you realize they're just normal people. It can it, like I never thought of them as normal people. I never was around NHL players. I was never around the NHL. And then when you get there, and I got to my first training camp, you're like, whoa, like, whoa, there's him, there's that, there's Sergey Fedorov, there's whoever, and you're like, holy moly, I can't believe I'm here, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is cool. But like you said, then you're like, oh, so they're not just like normal. I don't know. It is. It's just playing hockey. And um, what I found neat was taking my son to skate with O'Reilly, not to bring it up again, but it's pretty cool (laughs) when you can take your 10 year old to skate one on one with O'Reilly. But like it was the three of us in the locker room. And then um obviously he has to shower after we worked hard. It's just the three of us in there. Well, he, he gears down, he gets in the shower. Well, and Colby's looking at me. He's like, I can't believe like I'm in a locker room and like O'Reilly showering and he's looking at me. And then all of a sudden O'Reilly lets out a fart in the shower. And my son looks at Colby looks at me and he's like, he farts just like us. <laughs> and, but it's funny because we've gone there four or five times now. And he went from that first time meeting him where the face turns bright red. He having a hard time talking to like, this is yeah. normal. This is normal, and he's a normal guy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, good stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is good. That's pretty funny. Anywho, <laughs> next poster pick. Ski trip. You got all the fellows at the top of the mountain skiing. I was there. Yeah. Not able to participate in the skiing, right? Yeah, but still one of the yeah, one of my most favorite trips I think I've ever been on. That was in more. Zine, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. And Marzine. um Ski that trip, that was a time. Yeah, that was such a fun time. That was my first time skiing. Um is that right? Wow, yeah. What a fun. yeah, yeah. So that was awesome. And like a lot of those guys were really good skiers, like Lordo, Carl Hudson, those guys were flying down the mountain. And Hoth. Hoth, yeah, Hoth too. I got I down mean, the I got down the hill on my red saucer. Yeah, you were on the saucer. Um, right. You made it, though. It's a, yeah, it was just, 
Yeah, fun times. That's a great that picture was, you yeah, guys had. Was, I wish I would have been part of the top of the mountain and I would have been skiing with you guys, but the knee wasn't quite up for it, right? I had to use the saucer. But yeah. Fun times. Yeah, just a fun trip. Good, good group, good group of guys. Do you know just, in the small world, awesome. Joe, that good um, weather. Well, I'm not able to release signings here in the shed. I am not an agent yet, Dicko. But um, <laughs> um, I do know a guy that signed in Morzine this year. You know, he signed. I can't talk about it. He may be British, but he's okay. going. He's going to Morzine, and he he then he's going to be skiing on those same hills that. We ran a muck on, right? That's a small world. That's a small world. He's going to have a fun season if that's the case. Yes. I might know what you're talking about. Not confident, but I think I could take a guess, but I won't. So we can't. Yes. So don't. don't have the rights for that. Right? No, no. It's just my shed. I can say what I want, but I actually can't say what I want when it comes to people signing because it's not my place, right? It's right. like this mosey thing. Yeah. Jeepers, creepers. I had to keep that under my hat for months, right? Yeah, I don't think you had to. I think it was a secret. Well, not really a secret. I think a lot of people already knew about that. Yes. I was pretty exciting when he told me he was going to be a devil and we could get Kit Kat get that going again, right? Yep, that's true. Mm -hmm. worst, worst kept secret, though. <laughs> I I would agree with that. Um, You know, I don't know. They just signed this guy, too. I, I just saw the stuff about the logo. Marcus Crawford, this D-man. I saw him play when I watched you guys once or twice last season. That guy can play. He was a plus 47 last year. That doesn't even seem like a real number. That's like Nicholas Lidstrom, and, you know? Yeah. I know Crow is a... You know, he's he's a competitor. Like he's a guy who really wants to win. He's one of those guys we talk about. Like in practice, if we're having a competition, he doesn't like. To, you know, he doesn't want to lose. And I love seeing it. He gets all fired up. Um, and you can see it like in his play. Like he's just so competitive, offensive. You know, defenseman, but plays hard in the D zone. So he it's a huge huge. Yeah, we, he had a big year, so he must have had some options elsewhere. So it's it's nice that we were able to get him back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I got a question. What is your favorite pregame speech ever? Whoa, ever. Anywhere. Think about it. I know it came out of nowhere. This is a cutting edge question here. Um Okay. <laughs> okay. No. Think I don't about know. It. I, so it's not when I'm spray painted as the goat 88 on my back and I run in with the Taz head on naked, spray painted as you, and then get in Richie's face and say, Do you remember when hockey was fun? No, that's not yeah, it. Eh? That is what about when I got in Richie's face at the very first time and I jumped out of that closet in the big blue tent, dressed as Thor, and asked if they were going to take the whole hammer and like it. And I had the hammer that was Colby's when he was like two years old and put it right in Richie's face. See, or is it you the axe those... and the sword and the shield where I got in Richie's face and said, you quiet psycho, and then smashed the axe at his feet? I don't know. Maybe you've had other pregame speeches that got you fired up. I don't know. I did my best. I know that. Was the I can sleep at night. Was the first was the first one in Sheffield because you took the fan bus to Sheffield? That was like when I was like eight. No, and uh, we had the biggest game of the year. We were first and second against them, and and came in hot on the fan bus. That was I was like eight. No, as a pregame speaker, and I I said to the I said to Lisa, I said I the fellows need me. I'm back part of this team. I'm not just injured. I'm the pregame speaker and I have to be in Sheffield. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to say take a pick. Any one of your pregame speeches. Probably Thank your you. first one though when 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 it was like new. And you didn't know what was, was happening. Was and Lordo, one. yeah, you're right. That was shocking, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 That was quite shocking. I think the first one was Thor hanging out in the that uh the closet at the end of the BBT room where not it was just a pile of stuff there was nothing in there except for me right and lordo did a speech and then everybody was like that's the speech that's what we're coming out to and then all of a sudden i came out hot out of the other end of the room right 
hot hot yeah that was that's right yes that was probably a lonely place in there for a little bit i'm sure (laughs) there's a lot of time to think right joe we talked about that did you not um bring out your inner wally and do a speech and it is very interesting when you're sitting in those bathrooms waiting for your 20 to 30 seconds right yeah I, yeah i did it when we were in champions league and Graz. uh the team didn't know because i was injured at the time but they it's probably why grad signed you right because <laughs> they knew you'd do anything <laughs> yeah, yeah they'd, this guy will do anything sign him up so yeah i channeled my my inner wally there good stuff big. and then we won right that was a big win too and winning is fun and um being a part of it is fun and but i wasn't a part of it and then oh, in a I, way in a way you are i found my way to be a part of it right yeah and yeah. you got to do your best at whatever you're doing right yep yeah and i did i did my best right did my best <laughs> okay if you had to choose again this is going to just piss people off just for fun okay if you had to pick again and you couldn't go to the Devils, would you go back to Stavanger or Graz? Oh, yeah, Norway or Austria? Um, Piss one I, of them off. I Let's do say, it. Piss somebody off. Don't say something nice. No, like I really like both, but I I would probably yeah, say I like here the you go again. I'd be like a the nice guy. I'll pause. No, no, no. I like the hockey in Austria better. Is that right? I think the league. Oh yeah, it was it, the hockey was a lot of fun. It was a lot more of like. I don't know, puck possession. Skill. It was a little bit, I would say like Norway was a younger league. So you had a lot of little water bugs flying around, a lot of like dangling skill, like one-on-one skills, you know? Probably more um, lower budget teams that are bringing in the kids that just rip around instead of. Yeah, which I like, sometimes it's like hard to play because like they're unpredictable, right? There's not, it's not as much like structure. Whereas like Austria, I just found it a bit of like a, a smarter league, a little more like structure um you know i really enjoyed the hockey and grass is a great spot too um we just didn't have that good of a team which you know wasn't very fun not being good is not fun losing is not fun no no it makes like the whole day suck right though like when you've lost like a couple games and it's like you got that whole week till the next game like that whole week sucks showing up to practice sucks eating lunch together sucks but if you've won the last two games then eating lunch is fun right yeah Winning changes everything. It really does. <laughs> um, so what is your favorite barn in the EIHL? You can't say Cardiff. You can say the chocolatey Manchester Storm, though. You probably haven't seen the chocolate come out in Manchester, but it's pretty neat from here in the shed, you know? Yeah. Favorite yeah. arena? Like favorite arena to play in? Um it won't be Manchester. That's tough for the road team. I get it. Yeah. Wouldn't be Manchester. I, I would have to say probably like Belfast. It's it's close between Belfast, Sheffield, but I would probably say Belfast. You're saying Belfast because you get to go for the weekend and you can't fly out till Sunday. That's I mean, yeah, it's like the whole every time you go to Belfast, it's like you go for like the weekend. It's like the you know, it's like and you're yeah. there. It's your team, usually a big game. There. That's why I, I, I like playing Sheffield too. It's always, it just feels like it's always a big game. game. You know, they have a nice arena too. Um, but I, I would probably say, yeah, Belfast. They got, they have a nice arena, you know. It's Can't just too much that. ice, right? Too much ice for me. That's all. You think? Like too big? Yeah. Yeah. Pre game skates, and I'd see like we do the four blues, and then you get the puck, and you're like, so I got to skate all the way there to just shoot it on the net? That's too far. To me, no. And then you get in the game, man. You get in the game and you get the puck or you beat a guy out of the corner. And you're like, so I still got to skate all the way to that net. It's like <laughs> back in the big blue tent, you beat a guy out of the corner. You're taking that to the net. <laughs> I think it's deceiving because like those arenas have like a lot more um, stands. They have, you know, their crowds are much bigger because even like Nottingham, I feel like they have, if to me, it feels like they have the biggest ice Oof. in the league by like a mile. So I, I found that the same as Belfast. They're both too big. Same with Sheffield. Like someone would dump it in. I'm like, so what? You want me to change? I'm not going to chase that. Like, you want me to get it back on Evan Mosen? He goes, picks up the puck and skates it out. It's like, come on, <laughs> just pass it to it's me. A long way to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wasted energy. Yeah. 
If you dump it in in those rinks, folks, you're not a skilled player. Stop doing it, right? <laughs> Maybe a soft chip and go get it, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. So when do the fellas show up? up? When do you got friends back in Cardiff? Right now, what do you got? Um, Richie? Who else is in town right now? Um, ben, Yeah, we got Dougie's here, uh, Waller's here, Ben Davies, Batchy, Richie, Bouncy. Oh, shit, guy, um, shit, guy, shit, guy, shit, guy, shit, guy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Beauties. Yeah. Um, that's Sam yeah, Duggan's that's, a real, been... real fantastic fella, isn't he? Yeah, he's such a great guy. He's, you know what? He's, he's a young, young guy, but he's, he gets it. You know, he, he does he's get like, it. He's got, and I think and when, when we're talking about we're a dying a... breed and all that, and then when he's around, you're like, well, you're right part of this crew, and you're a young buck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's just a guy who gets it. I mean, he's. Just a, a great guy. He's a, he's a you know, works he has, hard. Loves, he has fun loves, playing loves hockey, so talks to every fan, signs yeah, anything he, they want. Yeah. Yeah. He's the, he's your, your pro, right? Like he's just, you know, it's impressive uh, for how young he is that he gets it. Okay. Here's the next question. Cutting edge again. You played in Norway and Austria. We talked about that. Do you, what do you find the differences the most between the EIHL, Austria, and Norway? Um, Norway, I thought was like I kind of mentioned, like I thought it was like fast, but uh, like kind of like chaotic fast. Like I said, like guys were just like running around a lot. Like there's a lot of skill. Like a lot of there's a lot of players there that are highly skilled players. Um, the just structure I mean, wasn't quite the same. But just the younger. Yeah, it was just kind of like every, you know, anytime we're creating offense, it wasn't. I was used to like coming from Cardiff, Lordo style was like we were a puck possession cycling team, right? It was like wear the other team down. Once they get tired, then we'll take our chances. Whereas like then I go to Norway and it's like get the puck in the zone, try to dangle defenseman, go right to the net and like just try to score right away. And then it's like if it didn't work, we turn the puck over and then the other team goes the other way and then they would try that and then we go the other way. So it's kind of like it was a little like chaotic at first. <laughs> Yeah, I would say the and, second league in Germany that was, was the same. Yeah, it was just, uh, you know, like I said, like really skilled, but just a, just a lot different. And it took me a little bit to get used to, to be honest. Like at first I, I was just like not very comfortable, but then kind of adapted. Uh, Austria, like I said, I think it, it was really s smart league. A lot of like uh, hockey sense. A lot of players. like I o Older like, players, right? With a lot, yeah. Older players that, you know, I, I like – I come in like say the other team would like dump the puck in our zone and as a centerman I'm coming low our D-man's getting in the corner he's not even looking at me he's just taking the puck one touching it to me in the middle as a centerman and then we're like breaking out you know just like smart players like like quick little plays like that and getting it like, getting so pucks in uh stride on your tape and when you're you're feeling yeah. it and then you get that puck on you know, on your tape in stride it changes your whole shift it's like when people used yeah. to rim it to me and it's like, so now I got to muck it up here and try and chip it out where like you could have just passed it to me and then I could pass it to the next guy. And then all of a sudden our yeah. shift changes because we're flying and we're grooving where you start yeah. just passing it to pass it instead of like passing it, it changes things. Definitely. And like, I love that play because like, even though it's, it seems like it's a blind pass to the middle but like it's my responsibility to be there. So if he throws that puck and I'm not there, it's not really on him. It's it's kind of like our team. It was like it was on me, you know. And I yeah, like that. You had to be the there. Centerman. Whoever's the first guy back, you have to be there. That is your position. So I just like really kind of like that style, and you know, just a lot of smart players. Yeah. Um, okay. I think like our our league is like i think we have a lot of sorry smart players like in our league and i think we have a good mix of like skill smarts um some speed um it's more like it's like a north american game it really is i love the ehl and i think the biggest difference from the ehl to the other leagues was there's fans that maybe don't get along from team to team but for the most part everybody showed up to the rink and was like a hockey family like they were cheering on their teams. Yeah. Um, you can take Twitter out of this because the people showing up to the games and that were legit and looking at you in the face, they could they they weren't mean. They were 
they were hockey fans cheering on their team and everybody was a family. And like, it's like you get to that playoff weekend and you're like, well, this doesn't exist anywhere in hockey where 10 teams yeah. show up, 10 teams, fans show up. There's only four teams there and 10 teams, fans show up and everybody has a time and like celebrates the game yeah. of hockey and cheers whoever they want on. And like, that's fun. I know it is cool. It's definitely, I love seeing like our fans. They've all become like friends. It's like a community, you know, they've, it's a hockey family. Like you said, I feel like even, even though during the season they go, you know, maybe they go back and forth with other fan bases, but like then when they get together on that playoff weekend, they're all having drinks together and, you know, they're, you know, it's just like at the end of the day, we're all hockey fans here. We want our team to win, but. Guys want to make a little bit of money and enjoy the game and try and win. And we all like competing and um, the fans should embrace that and like cheer on who they want, but enjoy the sport. Have fun. Like we're none of us are going over there and are going to be retired when we're done playing hockey. We're not making enough money, folks. We're doing it because we love it. You know? Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. So enjoy this game. Stop complaining. Right. (laughs) Do you want to know a fun (laughs) fact, Joe? I do think that when all of my little shed guys are done running mucks, all the puppies I raised when I was an older guy, I wouldn't raise them. They are who they are. But I think I will have legit the most retired jerseys of teammates ever anywhere in hockey. I'm talking anywhere. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. impressive. Are these guys you people may not saying? know, people may not know about it, people may not be keeping track, but it's true. Um, so just gonna go through the list here. Are you ready? Yeah, these are just a few of them because there are more. Bouncy is gonna go up, Richie is gonna go up. I personally would put Batchy up because he's not done yet, he's just getting started. He's already had a testimonial, he ain't going nowhere. Hadadi, question mark. Great player, great ambassador. Now he's an ambassador for a brand in the queue, which makes sense because yeah. he's the type of guy you want ambassadoring your brand, right? He's a beauty. Yeah. 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 Number 88 will be in the rafters and spray painted on my back. Okay. <laughs> Marco Mueller in Castle, Germany was a puppy with me in Beatingheim and Hellbron. Corey Mapes, Hellbron, Germany, is going to retire number 24. Dominic Walsh, Chow, Germany, going to retire number eight. Carlos, Mark Whitfoth, is a shed guy. And um, Prob, maybe, maybe not, will get his jersey retired in Freiburg. Christian Billich, same place. And now, I already have three that are retired. Dirk Robel in Beatingheim, Justin Kelly in Beatingheim, and Renee Schofs in Beatingheim. Um, that's just a few I've written down. Um, I think there's more and I think winning changes everything. And, um, it's neat winning in different places because winning gets people's jerseys to the rafters and losing gets them gone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the impressive list. You might have to get a little, like a uh, little flag. I think we got to let someone again. know. I think nobody keeps track of this. But I'm pretty sure when it's all said and done, I I don't have my jersey retired other than in the shed, but I'm pretty sure my teammates will have the most ever. And I never even realized that until I started talking in my shed, you know? Yeah, that's an impressive stat. I hope so. I think it's cool, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, you know, whatever. Anyways. You've been there for the start of this, though, Joe, and I think it's neat that I'm going to see your jersey retired someday. Um, did you know that you inspired Miley Drazy to play hockey? Yes, I do. I remember when she was young. Um, I think she was just kind of being introduced to ice hockey at that time. Um, and now I, I I see her all the time down the rink, and she's, she's killing it. You know, she's she just had her GB trials and. You know, it's amazing to see how far she's come. She just loves the sport, and it feels good to be able to have an impact on on someone who, you know, now is doing something they enjoy so much and bringing some happiness. That's kind of like the goal, right? Well, and you don't even realize it until you're out, especially when you start 
coaching kids and you can see the impact you can make on kids is I didn't really realize like when I was in Beatingheim, Germany, I could I, honestly, I could have done more with the kids. I could have made a better girl impact. I could have been out there. What else was I doing on Tuesday and Wednesday night? Right. Like I could have gone out and skated with the kids and made an impact yeah. and I wasn't doing as much, but then when you look back on your career and like Raheem Rara in Cardiff is wearing number 18 because of me, those are the things you get to take with yeah. you all day, right? Yeah, I know. I, even sometimes, like, you walk around the rink, uh, and, you know, there's kids on the ice training or whatever, and you see, like, a, a Martin jersey. I, I, I still think it's, like, pretty cool. It's, it know, is cool. I don't really... Yeah, you I probably should granted, keep I... thinking it's cool. It's like when I see a two ales and hockey tails shirt or something on someone, and it just makes my yeah. heart clench up a bit. Yeah, it's just like nice to see, and I it kind of brings me back when I was, you know, a young that at that age, and you know, I uh, the idols that I had, you know, obviously I looked up to them a lot. So, you know, it means a lot. It's that's it's awesome. It really is, and just like I had them on together, and. uh to think you inspired her and then I inspired him. Like we get to keep that, you know, when it's all over, yeah. we, we still got that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's. And cool so it's cool to see something like that where they're coming up in GB and they're becoming hockey gals and guys, but is it not neat to see what team great Britain does these days? with all our friends yeah. and all the hockey family we know in the UK, it's like you have your devils that have been your brothers for a lot for years. And, but you also like have to be the same as me where you totally respected Jonathan Phillips and what he was about and how he played hockey and the leader he was. And to see a team of shed guys go out and win gold medals and get to the top of pool a, then you see them on TSN. That is neat stuff, isn't it? I know. I remember it was a, a couple of years ago when they were in the top pool and I was back home in Canada watching like their highlights and Patrick Kane's coming down on Bouncy and, you know, Bouncy makes his big save on him. And you're just like, that is so cool. Right. And you're like right. so proud. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm not only rooting, I'm not only like rooting for the, for the, my teammates on the devils, but you know, all the, all of GB, I mean, I'm playing in, in the British hockey league. So you're a you part know, of it, Joe. I want them to be, yeah, I want them to do well because they're essentially representing the EIHL, and that's where I play. So you know, it was it was so cool watching them, and it's so impressive uh, what they've done. And you know, it's unfortunate that they don't they don't get enough coverage over here. And I know I know it's been a it's been a bit of a an, an issue with trying to. It's amazing know, I can watch it more bit. on TSN here in Canada. I can watch GB yeah. play almost every game, but people in Great Britain can't. I think they had to this recent world championships, they had to like either pay for it and it wasn't on basic satellite or cable. I'm not sure exactly, but it's, you know, it's like, well, like, why not? Like what they're doing is, is amazing. And it, it's a Disney movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's truly is incredible. It, you know, their accomplishments. So, um, yeah, just it's been it's it's awesome to see what they're doing, and obviously you know Pete is the, is the head coach there. So and to see what he's done with them playing against these, you know, great this great competition in these other countries and seeing them like in these games is is impressive. Why wow, and it's it's so cool for me to be part of the game still, and like that you're still playing, that all these guys I played with are still playing. It's like I think that's what winning does, though, is when you lose teams don't sign those guys because they lost when you win stuff people are wanted people take notice you keep playing and it's like it's neat to see the guys that are still playing and then when i get to see what happens with their careers and it's like i am yeah. just so proud of all my little shed guys and gals you know <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, am. no, I can. <laughs> you've got a lot of you've got a lot of friends out there to follow. It's it's hard to keep track, and I cheer for a lot of teams because I don't yeah. actually cheer for teams. I cheer for people. You know, <laughs> it's like Bryce Reddick just signed in Glasgow, <laughs> and I was like, and he was like, "Are you okay with this?" And I was like, "Dude, I 
I don't cheer for teams. I cheer for people. I'm cheering for you. I want you to do well. I want you to run amok, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That'll be good. Yeah. You know, Red X, he's another great guy. Wish obviously we could, we could have all these great guys back, but I'm, I'm happy that he's in the league again. We'll be able to see him. Absolutely. Isn't it fun when the game ends and you play against a good buddy and you get to have like your couple minute talk before they get on the bus or the plane or whatever they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's always great to be able to catch up with guys, even if it's a quick couple minutes before they get on the bus or whatever, it's just like, or you get a full like hour and a half in the shed with them. Right. That's what I want. (laughs) (laughs) That's even better. Um, Well, I I can't wait to watch you guys play next year. I can't wait to watch you guys run amok. Um, You guys better be careful with Manchester. They're going to be a squad. Got a new sponsor, right? But um, just trying to keep parity in the league. You know, these big budget teams, I got to keep things fair, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're just making sure there's fair play all around. <laughs> I, I just like watching shed guys compete, right? And uh, I'm just trying to make sure that there's parity in the league. And they have uh, had my back through all this. Is the time I had on Critch, the guy I'll be sponsoring, the captain, I did yeah. write to the team and i said hey um i need you to share something and i need to get this thing going and they said one second we'll get her going and they shared that i wanted chocolate thrown on the ice when they win their next game because of captain critch and they did that and then the chocolate storm happened and it was pretty neat when a team i've never played for had my back and then i was part of their hockey family right that is pretty cool i remember seeing that and I thought it was pretty, yeah, really cool that you could have such an impact from over, you know, across the pond and have everybody, even though you played for Cardiff, like you said, it's hockey family. It is hockey family. And um, I don't know how the games are going to go in Manchester this year. I know that if, say, they did beat Cardiff um, and chocolate started flying out of the crowd, you'd be really pissed off as a competitor that you lost but you would also think of me and laugh. (laughs) You wouldn't laugh. You'd be pissed off, but like, you'd think, geez, that's neat. Right. (laughs) I'm going to snag one of these chocolate bars on the way out. (laughs) You have to, well, they only throw them if they uh, win. And um, so, you know, the deal is you got to earn it. Right. So you can steal a chocolate bar, but somebody, Somebody will take a picture of you stealing that chocolate bar, and I think it'll be hilarious. You know? Yeah, no, I wouldn't be that. I'm joking. Remember, I don't like chocolate bars, so you won't catch me. No, you got to earn it, right? (laughs) Yeah. But if Cardiff fans go to Manchester and Cardiff wins, fun's not banned there, right? And I've been to Manchester on the fan bus. I know things can get carried away. And if you got chocolate in your pockets and Cardiff earns it, then feel free, right? And if Manchester earns it, it, then they get to throw the chocolate, right? And fun is fun, right. and hockey's supposed to be fun, right? That's right. That's why we play. That's right. Okay. Cut it. Last cutting edge question of the day. Okay. Have you ever thought about life after hockey? Bet you have. <laughs> yeah, I have. Of course I have. Um, I have. I'm still kind of unsure what I will do. Mm-hmm. few kind of ideas on on what I'll do but um not quite sure just kind of taking taking it year by year right now with hockey and um I think uh just have to wait and see I understand I was that guy <laughs> and then you start doing something <laughs> you know you're like yeah, okay this is what I do now <laughs> right yeah yeah, I'm going to make sure there'll be something ready for me when I'm done hockey. I have a few ideas, but um, yeah, we'll see. Well, just so you know, Joe, if you can become a goat at hockey and you treat people the way you treat people and talk to people the way you do and give everybody the time, you're going to do great at whatever you do next, okay? Appreciate that. Thank you. Hope yes. So. And um, seriously, thanks for making the time. You are still my favorite player. Ryan O'Reilly's got nothing on you, okay? (laughs) Thank you. It means a lot. (laughs) Oh, it's fun when you play with a guy who it's your first year in the UK, and then you see what you guys have done. And realistically, it's how I can do this. 
if you guys would have sucked the next couple of years when I leave and don't win stuff, things would have changed. People would have changed. And there ain't no, there ain't no shed, you know? Yeah, so thanks. You know, yeah. Thanks for running amok. Yeah. Hey, no problem. That's what, that was the goal the whole time. We said we need to win these, these trophies. That that the is podcast. the whole that is the whole point of it, right? Is yeah, you you need me to be happy, and you <laughs> want me to be able to talk to people, and you want to keep your core group together. And it's like when you become friends with people for a year, and then you don't win stuff, they blow it up in Europe. That's what they do. And you want to be with yeah. your friends. You want to keep playing with your friends, and you don't want to keep yeah. making new friends unless you're in the shed. Um, but <laughs> when you're on a team, you want to be successful and have everybody back, right? That's right. Yeah, I know. That's that's the goal. I'll, I'll always. Well, so, see, always seems like you got being the... on here, Wally. Thank you for having. Me. Hey, it is lovely seeing you again, sir. Good seeing you. It's that, it only was been a month, but it's always nice to see you. Right, but nobody knew about that. Right, we had to talk about it, and we did run a muck at Josh Batch's testimonial. Good work, Batchy. Hell of a job, right? Yes, that's confirmed. Yes, we dominated that place. And this has been another episode of Two L's and Hockey Tales with the Goat Wally.